Hello, my friends, and welcome back. It is Friday, October 11th, 2019. I am the Drunk Poker Roots Beer Time. If you're Canadian, which most of you are, watch these things, uh, it's Thanksgiving weekend. So ha happy that. Ha happy happy Turkey weekend. How you doing? You, if you're with me, you're working right through. But hey, <laughs> beer. You know what? I always espouse that beer can be art. Beer is art, man. It's art writ large. It's art writ liquid. And thanks to our friends at Collective Arts for always kind of pushing that, you know, with the constantly rotating artist series in the cans. And now they've released their, uh, an addition to their flagship series, to their, you know, core lineup, uh, audiovisual logger. Um, and what every month, sorry, every every series, so I'm not sure how often I should have looked that up, but when they change the series, quarterly maybe, probably, uh, it's a collaborative series featuring one record label, four bands, and one artist. Um, and they put it there, the label, this is Mom and Pop that they're featuring this time. I picked up Sunflower, um, and I picked up uh, Ash, just two of the, I think there's four, five, so I picked up two. I'll probably pick up the other ones as we go along. <sighs> Loggers, for lack of a better term, are good. The world loves loggers and pilsners. Craft beer people tend, you know, no, no, I shouldn't say that. Some craft beer people tend to poo poo them. No poo poo. No poo poo. <laughs> you can't always drink with your pinky up. Sometimes you gotta drink like a beer. Tastes like a beer. This is important. So could I, some people might question why, why, you know, why not add another IPA? Well, why add another IPA? They already have rotating IPAs in the LCBO that blow a lot of the competition away that are generally fresh for the most part it is you know some like anything sometimes you find some that aren't and you let them know and they, they they fix that problem but uh the thing with with them is i think they recognize that there is an audience for this and if craft beer is truly for everyone and i hear people say this and then they only want to drink ipas and i'm like well okay but not everybody wants them mrs Paul hates ipas she tries them she tries every single one she doesn't like them she doesn't like sours do you know what she likes? Porters, stouts, says some saisons. She likes lagers. That is a lager. This is a beer my father will drink. And my father does, he's tried them too. Maybe Brother Mike even. But, you know, cracker malt body, you're getting beer smells. Beer smells, you say. <laughs> and Mrs. Polk, after I've had too many, sometimes they smell like beer. I'm like, sexy beer. Sexy beer. Cheers, my friends, to Collective for, for dropping a lager. Why not? Thank you. Good, good. I need a good lager in my life. Cheers. That's a beer. That's a good beer. It's a good beer. It's a beer. It tastes like a beer. You know, you get that um, kind of a cracker. It, 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 it's malty, a malty body, but it's not like, you know, pretty malty. You know, it has... I hate describing lockers. I really do, because it's a beer that tastes... It tastes like beer. We all know what beer tastes like, but without that corny flavor that you get in mass-produced macro lagers, and it seems to have a bit more body than you would get out of a macro lager, which, you know, a lot of times are filled with adjuncts, like rice and whatnot. And, and you know, it's funny, because having a Japanese rice lager, which they also made, I really enjoyed that. But there's something to be said for this. It is nice. It's got some... I want to say some floral notes, some grassy notes a little bit. Um, but honestly, at the end of the day... The best description of this beer is going to be that it tastes like a beer, but better. Okay, again, it's not going to get people excited. It's not going to. It's not going to get you know the, the picture people excited, which is weird because it's got great artwork and it's clear, crisp, clean beer, and it, it it's just a beer that goes with anything. So to me, like if if craft beer is for everyone then the incentive is to brew beer that everyone can try. You know, is this going to replace, say, Ransack or Surround Sound now? If, oh, I love Surround Sound. IP number 11, grab another couple IP number 11 as my go-to collective arts beer. No. Will I have it in the fridge because sometimes I want a beer that tastes like a damn beer? Yes. And that's okay, too. Again, this is all relative. You know, I mean, they always take things with a grain of salt. Remember what pe people who talk about beer have things they like, styles they like, flavors they like. And this is evident by the way they talk of beer. 
my personal mission has always been to judge the beer based on the merits of the beer and what the beer is supposed to be. I always want to tell you, hey, this is a lager. Now, if I don't like lagers, I do. But if I don't, I'm going to say, okay, a lager should be XX and X. If this hits all the marks, that's a good lager. Okay, even if I personally don't like that style, it doesn't mean it's a bad beer. You know, we've had beers like that. So anyways, I'm rambling on talking about a lager, but it's been a long day. And I'm going to open the other one and drink it and barbecue some burgers. So I hope you're having a great long weekend. I will see you later. Please pick up some audiovisual lager. Give yourself a treat, a beer that tastes like a beer. Cheers. I love big gulping beers, and this is a big gulping beer.